Bin Laden. Yep. We've changed our beautiful screens yeah, back that's here. That's it right there. And that's the house. Yes. Or hole. That's the house. What right do you call there. it? That's a compound. So the compound would be every building inside of the walls. And uh, that's actually the, the walls are part of the re one of the reasons that the, the woman that found Bin Laden was so convinced he was there because you couldn't see into anything. There were walls outside. There were walls on the balconies. There were walls where you, I mean, you couldn't place a camera somewhere in that mountain and see in because they put the walls up. Someone knew what they were doing. So that compound, um, that compound, that's it. And that we, they showed it to us. Um, the, the, there was a team that was working Bin Laden but it was a woman in particular that they made that movie Zero Dark Thirty about. I saw that movie too. Yeah, good movie. movie. They did a good job. Um, and that girl's- I'm gonna called, go watch all these movies again. Oh yeah, yeah, these are, they're good movies. They did a good job with yeah. them. Um, they called her Maya, and she was played by Jessica Chastain, and she fucking killed it. She was so good in that movie. And the woman that she played is one of, if not the toughest person I've ever met, emotionally, ever. Like just, Hard as they come, it's awesome. And her, and her role in this was? She's CIA, and she, she was the, uh, she's the person that found him. And like when she was asked, I think by the, the bosses, like the sec Secretary Panetta uh, of the CIA, like what else do you do for the CIA? And she's like, this is it, I do this. I found him and that's what I do. And when she got done too, she, she was pissed she didn't get a parking spot. Wow. <laughs> but yeah, so, so she, uh, she and a team, uh, in, in their defense, um, they brought us to them. Um, we had finished another deployment to Afghanistan. I was actually a senior enlisted guy running a few different stations in Afghanistan for cross-border intelligence to try to find people. But I, I, at that point, thought Bin Laden was gone. I thought he was a ghost. Uh, he's a myth, and he's going to go down in history as an as Al-Qaeda saint. And we finished that deployment, and we came back. And I was actually on a, a trip to Miami, uh, dive, diving. And a you know good deal trip. You're done with war. Let's you know see the family. Let's go diving. Got Miami's a blast. And they called some of us back to Virginia. You're always having a good time. When yeah, those well, calls hey, come. morale. If you if you keep your people happy, they're going to work harder. If you keep morale high, if you little things like if you can say for normal work, occasionally say please and thank you, let them know they're appreciated. It's going to go back. Mm -hmm. I was in the airport today. If you start start your conversation with the TSA off with a smile, you're going to get through a lot better, and they're going to have a better day. Compliment something legit. Like hey, those shoes are cool. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. gonna, they'll have a better day. I agree. You know, you don't know what someone else is going through. So yeah, so Miami, having a bad day, go to Miami. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I'm with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so they so, called us back and this, they, they brought 28 of us in to a, a back room at our place. So we got our team room and then there's a conference room. They brought us in, locked the doors. And the way it started was, we didn't see any of this yet. They said, and this is a good story. They said, we found a thing and this thing, this is real. This is not a drill. They found a thing. This thing is in a house, and this house is in a bowl in these mountains, and you guys are going to go get this thing and bring it back to us. And we said, okay, what's the thing? He said, we can't tell you. Okay. Um, what mountains? Can't tell you. Where's, which country is it? Can't tell you. How are we getting there? Can't tell you. How much air support do we have? And they said, none. I'm like, okay, that's... That's all we got. So, you, you're, so you, the task was to get them. Go, no, get something. Bring them. We didn't know what it was. Or bring something back. So, something, you're going to go in this house. And they sort of said it's a house. And they wouldn't really tell. And they said, but you're not, you can't bring your Air Force guys. It's only SEALs. Be, just because we need this. Man. I mean, the Air Force guys are shooters too, but they specialize like in, one of them's a paramedic. One of them's a radio guy. But we, we're wow. bringing, we're minimizing the weight because of these, whatever's going to bring you. The, so we're, our brains are spinning so we thought it was going to be Qaddafi in, in Libya because the Arab Spring had just started this is April 2011 and the, the, the people were uprising in Tunisia and then in Egypt and in Libya and we as soon as before they killed him we assume we're going to go get Qaddafi and bring him out and, and we're going to go off on like a, a navy ship on like an Osprey which is a helicopter airplane okay and they just don't want to tell us and so we're getting ready for we're getting our gear ready for Libya and all week long, no one knows. Other SEALs are coming up. So what are you guys doing? I'm like, I don't fucking know. And uh, it was a Friday, and they, the bosses had been up. They're working everyone from there up to the president, and they're tired. They said, okay, look, go home and be with your kids tonight and tomorrow, and then come back Sunday, and then we're going to drive you somewhere, and we're going to bring, we're going to tell you, we're going to read you in. We're going to tell you what's happening. And so we said, okay, um, who's going to be there at the read? And they said, Secretary of Defense, Secretary of the Navy, the Vice President might be there. Then they're going on this list, and I'm like, what the fuck? And then they said uh, CTC pad, and then this and this and this. And I caught that. No one said anything, but CTC pad 
it was the CIA counterterror Pakistan Afghanistan and I'm thinking if we're going to Libya why is why are they going to be so I went home with this didn't say shit now we came back and it got kind of funny because we get they split us into these four dudes per van now we're driving into North Carolina somewhere and uh, I, I'm in the back seat my boss is here my two buddies are driving and I look at my boss I told him exactly that and I said this isn't Gaddafi I think they found Osama bin Laden and he looked at me and he, he said that's exactly what I was thinking and we're kind of discussing it. We're not sharing. And it was fucking awesome. The guy driving, he looked at me in the rearview mirror and he goes, Oh, Neil, man, if we kill Osama bin Laden, I will suck your dick. <laughs> so, so three weeks to the Double day. Double win. <laughs> yeah, we're standing over him in the house. And I said, now's a good time as any. He's like, oh, fuck you. I'm like, you said it. But, but so when we get down there um, and uh, we, the, they came in and they said, uh, the reason you guys are here, this is as close as we've ever been to Osama bin Laden. And they started showing us shit like this. Uh, not that close, but they had, a, they had a, um, a, a model of the house to scale, and they're just, you know, here's here, and we met the woman, and she said, here he is. Uh, she's on 100%, she's on, he's on the third floor of this. She would say, right now, and I don't understand why we're not leaving. He's there right now. And then they had an outdoor, they had a place kind of like it so we could train. And they let us come up with the tactics. The, as the guys on the ground, we have tactical command. So we will tell you the best way that we can do it. We came up with the perfect plan. And we rehearsed the perfect plan. And we're talking, like we would rehearse it for 10 so hours. So y'all didn't have any information of his people, his men. We had, they gave us so much information, I wanted to stop them. Like, stop it. I, I don't care. Uh, don't even tell me how many men and women are there. Tell me how many people you've seen and I'll figure out who they are when I get there. Yeah. I don't want to hear about this might bullshit. You tell me what you know and leave the rest of it out. And I don't, get, I don't give a fuck about how you tracked him from Karachi, blah, blah, fuck. Yeah. Like, I trust you. You're smart enough to find him. I'm smart enough to carry a sledgehammer and a gun. That's what we're going to do. So we came up with the perfect plan that we rehearsed over and over and over. And well, then we did a couple of contingencies. What was the plan? Uh, the plan was to two helicopters. We're going to fly the first one in between. So his house is here and the guest house is here. There's a yard. We're going to fly that here, kick ropes out, Snipers on each end, everyone fast ropes out, then they cover them, the snipers come down. My team is gonna drop off snipers outside, a dog, Cairo, the dog, a handler and an interpreter who uh, speaks the language native, like he doesn't have an accent, and then we're gonna go to the roof with seven of us, we're gonna fast rope onto the roof of his house, and then we're gonna jump onto the balcony. All then, of that sounds loud. Oh yeah, it's loud, but we're gonna, it, we're gonna catch him fast. We're gonna be fast, because we're, we're gonna beat him with speed. We don't have time to be quiet. We can't jump in because we have to walk in. Too big of a city. We're going to get the fuck in and hopefully. So, so how much time do you think you, how much time do you need in this plan I, from I, we want, copters? Uh, 90 minute flight in, 32 minutes on the ground, 90 minutes out. 32 minutes on the ground. Yes. So you got 32 minutes. 32 minutes. And that's, and that you got to figure that is because we don't, people don't consider that on a lot of missions, you stop places to refuel, like in Iraq. We don't have bases. Like we need to know how much fuel we got. Uh, it might come down to stopping because we're out of gas and fucking running to Afghanistan. We don't know. Wow. But we're going to get them. So that, that's, we're going to kill this dude. But, but, but you got to figure, well. So you're going to kill the guy. Let me, let me, let me back up a second because we're doing the perfect plan. Okay. And it's, it was crazy. We're, we're t over the, the, um, the model. And the boss said, what's the worst thing that could happen? And the youngest guy in the room said, the helicopter could crash in the front yard. Yeah. And we're like, what the fuck? That's, oh shit. And that's exactly what happened. So uh, we're back there though, and uh, we can't tell anybody that we're leaving. Uh, and I got it, like my daughter who was four is now seven, and she was always there. Uh, she was one when we went after Latrell. She was four for Phillips, and now she's seven. This has been Laden, and this is one we're not coming home from, and we know it. We're going to get shot down on the way in. Because we don't know if these helicopters, they're supposed to be stealth. We don't know if they work. And they have, this is not a third world country. They have probably they got, Russian or Chinese made uh, uh, anti-aircraft shit. We're going to get shot down. Well, why don't we have a cool helicopter then? I don't have any, because of fucking aliens. I don't know. I don't know how the hell we got them. <laughs> I've never seen them. The pilots who flew them had never seen them before. The president didn't know about them. Got it. Like they, they, when they were telling President Obama about it, they, and they were going over the options, the, I think like the chief of staff of the Air Force said, there is one more thing. And got he it. told them. But, um, uh, just the contingencies, we're going to get in a fight as soon as we land. If anyone's going to blow himself up and the entire building, it's Bin Laden. And we're going to get in a fight probably with the police and the Pakistan military, and we're going to run out of gas. We are not coming home from this, guys, so get used to it. We were so convinced we weren't coming home 
the guy that inevitably led me up the stairs, the last set of stairs, and it was never drawn up that way. It's life happens around you. Like you make a plan, God laughs at you. Yeah. But he, he just, came, it, sometimes it just happens. He came up and said, don't take this the wrong way. I'm going, okay? 100% I'm going. I need to say this out loud. If we know we're going to die, why are we going? And that's a fair question. So I, I actually went uh, shopping for my kids. Uh, I don't know what you buy three girls for daddy's not coming home. But I yeah. bought stuff and I'm leaving. And now I'm at a point where, um, it's, like I said, it's okay to be afraid because fear makes you think clearly. But I'm not afraid now. I'm focused. I know, but well, not too focused because on the way out, I'm carrying these things and I bumped into a sunglass hut in the mall. And I looked down and there's a pair of Prada sunglasses on sale, on sale for $240, right? And I'm thinking, I'm like, you know what? I'm a chief in the Navy. I can't afford these, but I am going to be dead next week in American Express can. YOLO. So yeah, exactly. Buy that I carried them in, I carried them in Bin Laden's room. I carried them in my pocket because Maybe we need to steal a car and drive to the embassy in Islamabad and the sun's going to be up. I carry Prada sunglasses. You're and I thought it'd be good marketing. Like imagine if you had a Navy SEAL on a billboard with like tattoos and a gun and sunglasses. And it says if you only have one day left to live, you might as well wear Prada. <laughs> this guy's good, man. Haven't heard from him, but if you know a guy. So, uh, uh, um, yeah, but so we knew that. And then uh, um, we, they launched us over to, to Jalalabad, Afghanistan, our team. And we already had a team there. Um, but they trained us up because it wouldn't raise any, like if the team in Afghanistan stopped working and started training for something else, someone would notice. If the team that's supposed to be ready to do something like Captain Phillips, someone would notice. They wouldn't notice us because we're supposed to be training. Mm -hmm. That's what we got picked. So we flew over there um, and uh, hung out with the dudes that knew what we were doing. And, and talk about professionals. You imagine being over there to do, doing work and they sent another team in to get Bin Laden? I would have been pretty fucking pissed. They mm -hmm. were complete pros. And they welcomed us in to like, that's the way it works. And, you know, actually, they went in on helicopters behind us. They rescued us. People don't know that part. I'll get to that one. Um, but then we were there. Um, President Obama had a couple um, decisions. Are we going to bomb them? There's, uh, there's, they just killed recently. Uh, I'm in Al-Zawahiri with that ninja bomb that sliced you up. Mm -hmm. They were thinking about that for him, something similar. But what if you miss him? You're never... The ninja bomb that like, yeah, sli like, slices you yeah, up. Yeah, like there was no uh, explosives on it. It just it killed... Like, I, apparently, you, it's a missile that you can kill the driver of a car and not hurt the passenger. It's okay. crazy. That's, that's, some, that's some alien shit again. Sounds or, you know, expensive. If, yeah, probably. Is. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, those are the, the, the guys we want on our team. Okay. Um, and, but then, uh, then there was us. And, then, and, and they, they, would give, they would give us the, um, the call. So we just want to be there in case he did. And he decided on a Friday, we had two days of 0% illumination with the moon. We want to go when it's completely dark. So we had two days that we could go. And we didn't go the first night because the correspondence dinner was that night. So the president and the cabinet are in D.C. with all the reporters having that dinner where they roast each other. Mm -hmm. President Obama got roasted about bin Laden. Like, well, we can't, some, some Seth Meyers told a joke about, well, we can't even find a son bin Laden, blah, blah, blah. President Obama just kind of sat there with that poker face. Can you imagine knowing we're going to kill him tomorrow and don't say anything? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's cool, isn't it? It is. And then the next night, we, uh, we, he, they, they gave us a green light. And then um, we... Uh, before we left, Bill McRaven, Admiral Bill McRaven, was the boss. Uh, he's, he was a, he's a retired four-star admiral now. He's a three-star admiral in charge of the whole thing. He's the one that sold it to uh, President Obama that we, you know, we could do it. And President Obama actually said, I was never convinced Bin Laden was there, but I was convinced you guys could go find out. Got it. So uh, Admiral McRaven said to us, um, I watched my favorite movie last night, guys. Uh, it's called Hoosiers. And uh, there's a team from Hickory, Indiana, that went up to Indianapolis. These boys had never left their city before and now they're in this arena and they're all awestruck and and the coach said uh hey get that tape measure what's the measurement from the the back of the rim to the free throw line it's 15 feet coach all right now get on his shoulders what's the measurement from the the rim to the floor it was 10 feet coach he said you'll find that's the exact same measurements at your gym in hickory this is just a bigger audience and he said guys you do this every night this is just a bigger audience and then I remember walking out, and I, I, talked to, I talked to Admiral Craven, and I said, you know, you're so busy, Admiral, that I doubt you watched Hoosiers last night, <laughs> but you were born to give us that speech right yeah. now. And then we left. They got a lot of good speeches, and you guys are screwed. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, these are dudes that, like, seriously have been waiting for this, I think, I'm assuming. Um, and then we got on our helicopters. I'm with the, the sniper that, that um, initiated the fire to rescue Phillips. He's here. He's going on the mission. We've got Cairo the dog. And we, uh, we get in the helicopters. We give each other hugs. You take your last piss. Oh, Captain Phillips was there. No, no, no. The guy that, the guy oh, that oh, rescued him. Got it. Got no, it, no. Got it. Shit, that would have been funny. I Captain Phillips. Let's see. What kind of line of work is he in? Yeah. 
Okay, so, uh, yeah, so, so y'all uh, got some, y'all got guys out yeah, there. Yeah, well, they picked the most experienced guys they could that were yeah. available. That was us, uh, uh, you know, 23 of us. And um, we got in these helicopters and we left. And then we, we crossed the border, and now we have 90 minutes where you can get shot down. But there's nothing you can do about it, so stop worrying about it. So I was counting, just counting to keep my mind. I looked over, and um, one of my buddies had fallen asleep with his headphones in. And I remember looking at my friend, I've known him for years, and I, I was like, you were asleep on the ride to Osama Bin Laden's house. It's like, you have ice in your veins, and I see why women find you attractive. That's yeah. fucking cold. Uh, and so I'm counting, and we banked to the south 80 minutes in, and I, remember, I have a tattoo of the words here. I, I was uh, 556, 557, freedom itself was attacked this morning by a faceless coward, and freedom will be defended. And I don't know how I remembered it, but it's like, like a Hollywood moment. I fuck a count, I'm gonna say that again. Then, Freedom of self was attacked this morning by a faceless coward and freedom will be defended. It starts to sink in. It's like, holy shit, I'm on this mission. And then we do one more bank uh, back on our attack run. The, the air crew guy, come, the crew chief, who did, gets no credit. There's, there's dudes on the plane making sure it flies and opens the... What if we couldn't figure the doors out? That would, Here's be, a dude. That would be me. <laughs> I'm serious. What thing? if, yeah, I'm like, we're ready to go and I can't get the fucking door. That, that, is a, that could happen. Mm -hmm. But he opens it and I look down and it's, uh, there's, there's lights, there's a city. I know there's a golf course. Like, Abbottabad, Pakistan is a resort town. And I'm just, the, the one thing that's kind of going through my mind is this is some serious Navy SEAL shit that we're about to do. And then the plan was, you know, I'm, we're behind him. We're in what's called Dash 2. They're Dash 1. They're going to hover. We're going to drop our guys off. We're going to go to the roof. That's how it's supposed to look. They came in here, and the pilot explained to me later that something with an updraft, uh, and it was warmer than we thought. He couldn't get the lift. The, 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 the fences were different here than they were where we trained. He said that if he would have powered it up like an inexperienced pilot may have, he's going to roll it, and he's killing everyone on board. But, and this is, he thinks this, this, if he spins it and puts the tail on the fence and buries the nose, it'll stop. It should stop. That's what he thought, and he did it, boom. And then, uh, so my pilot saw him do that, and he realized, and we have the four best pilots in the world, when we're very that lucky That is we fly to yeah. land, to land yeah. the plane, like mm -hmm. the helicopter. Like oh that. yeah, and he saw him do that. So we drop our guys off, we're going up, he saw that he couldn't hover, he's like, I bet I can't hover, so he put us down. And then I remember thinking, fuck it, I guess we start the war from here. And I put my foot out and I look up at Bin Laden's house and knowing I'm looking at the side, I got the fence here, there's Bin Laden's house. I know damn well that's the northeast corner. There's a double door. I call a breacher who's a, um, the methods of entry guy. He, he, he will get you in. He'll bomb it, he'll pick the lock, he'll fucking kick it open, whatever. He went up with a, a seven foot charge of C6, which is you know too bigger than C4, put it down and backed off, clacked it, it cracked open, and it, it was like a tin can with a, with a brick wall behind it. Oh, we're making all the noise in the world. Oh, we're a lot of now, yes. And that's why the people started waking up. They didn't know who we were. So um, he turns around and he said, failed breach, this is bad. Meaning the, the door didn't open, there's a brick wall. And I said, no, this is good. That's a fake door. Nobody does that. He's fucking in there. So I know there's another door over here that does open where the cars have been coming in and out. I didn't know they crashed. So I, I heard them saying over the radio, dash one going around, dash one going around, meaning dash one going around, like they took fire and they're gonna reattack. Mm -hmm. What they were saying was dash one going down. down. So I said a courtesy, I said to my call sign, hey, we're gonna blast the carport, meaning I'm gonna put a bomb on it. And they said, no, no, don't blow it, we'll open it. And the door opened and a thumb came out with a glove that I recognized, like someone I, I know. That shit y'all yep. figured out. And, and I, I didn't know, what I realized, right, there are points in life where it doesn't matter why you're here, you just are. And this is one of them. I don't need to know how you got there, man. You're just there. Fuck it. Clock's moving. So we go in. I didn't know they crashed. Didn't make sense. We get, guys have been in a gunfight. They already killed two in this house, one in that house. My guys are made entry in, in Bin Laden's house, so I'm like, I'm going to follow these dudes in. And I, uh, when we're going down a hallway, you don't want to stand in a hallway whenever someone's shooting. And I hope no one's ever in that situation. <laughs> but if someone starts shooting in your apartment building, get out of the hallway. Good advice. <laughs> So thanks. You're welcome. What, watch me save a life because of that. So uh, I'm, I'm backing into a room, and, and, and my thought is I'm, I'm looking for bombs because they're going to blow the house up. I don't see any. But then I'm watching my, I'm behind. So I'm watching guys work, and they are not affected by the fact that they could blow up at any minute. Their lives could be over. Everything that matters to them could be over right now, but they're not letting that affect them because it doesn't matter. I'm not going to stop it. So slow is smooth, smooth is fast. If you want to be really fast at something, slow down. So I'm watching them, I'm like, this is, and I'm watching dudes run across where we'd been in a gunfight to grab kids to put them with their parents. 
because they don't want this kid to be any more afraid than he already is. And that's what the good guys do. And I'm, I'm, I'm just proud of my guys. And this dude next to me who was in the helicopter, the crash, he whispered, helicopter crash. Now, we have two helicopters behind us that aren't stealth, 45 minutes behind us. I thought they got shot down. And I go, oh my god, what helicopter crashed? He goes, bro, our helicopter crashed. Helicopter. You walked right past it. I'm like, I was looking, fuck. As we're talking, the sniper, his job with Cairo, the dog, and, and Cheese, the handler, was to run around the whole place twice to make sure no one left. He got to the part where he, the pilot put the helicopter, mm -hmm. and he didn't know that they crashed. So he came over the radio, and I'm not kidding, and said, uh, guys inside, be on alert. They're ready for us. They have a training mock-up of our super secret helicopter in the front yard. And the <laughs> boss... <laughs> The boss came over and said, no jackass, that's ours. We crashed. And the sniper said, that makes a lot more sense than the shit I was yeah, just saying. Definitely. Yeah, so then we, so the guys are doing stuff. The woman that found Bin Laden said, um, I don't know what it looks like inside, and I know you don't, you don't want me to tell you what you th we think it looks like inside, but you will run into a stairwell somewhere. And on that stairwell, you will run into Khalid Bin Laden, and that's Osama Bin Laden's 20-year-old son, and he will be armed. And that's his last line of defense. And she was so cool. She said, if you can ace him, you get a shot at the big guy. That's the way she said it. And I thought that was fucking cool. So when they ran into him, I'm about, I'm about uh, eight dudes back, watching the guys in front of me go up the stairwell. And the stairwell came back. And Khalid was there. And he hopped behind this banister. And normally, if we're fighting going up, I'm going to grab guys and move them out of the way. Like, keep four dudes there, but if he starts throwing grenades or whatever, I, I want the limited amount of, but now, I know I'm gonna die today, so I'm just like, I gotta see what happens. I don't know how, like, are they gonna turn and try to kill it? I'm just gonna watch. I got a front row seat, and we're quiet now. I mentioned we don't talk, so he's confused, and so the point man whispered. I'm confused. Yeah. Where's all this guy's men? Well, we killed him. We just were on top of him. They shot back. But then, so they're in here, and Khalid had a shot, he's waiting on the stairwell for us to come around, and the appointment whispered to him, whispered his name twice, and said, come here, come here, in two different languages that Khalid spoke. And the point man knew he spoke these, and so Khalid was confused, and he went, what? That's some cold shit. So we, uh, No, <laughs> stop it. Stop right there. So at that point, you gotta block out all your dad emotions, all mm -hmm. your... You just gotta. That's not helping you at all. You gotta, you gotta cut that out. Yeah. That's that's not, wrong time. I'm thinking about not the, the time. I'm thinking place. about the guy in front of me and the, what's what's in front of us. Yeah. And what's behind us. So I don't just, I don't I don't have time to worry about the, the credit card bills, the Prada sunglasses I just bought. The guy. So Khalid pokes his head out. Yep. He's he got did. he's armed now too. So he's a threat. Like this is well with not that anyone. And he's armed. And he's mm -hmm. armed. But a face shot doesn't sound fun. No. Witnessing one doesn't now, sound fun for me. It's not fun, the but the noise, the, but brain you, uh, matter. You, um, you have to assume this was a very, very high threat level, and you've got to assume, especially around Bin Laden, they're suicide bombers. And the only way to deal with a suicide bomber is to shoot him right here, right around this area, to get him back here, because that will drop you. If you shoot someone in the chest, people have this is fucked up, but people have a will to live. And it takes them a while to die getting shot in the chest. And they can, all they need to do, let's say they have a positive and a negative lead on the, and there's a bomb here, all they need to do is this. So even if they do this number, yeah, you so gotta hit them here and it drops them. That's this, I mean, we knew this from, I mean, we knew this from <coughs> experience. I had a buddy that ran into a teenager in a closet who was wearing a vest and he was looking at him and the kid put his, he did that. He had put the vest on, the vest on backwards. Mm. So my buddy got fucked up, but he didn't hit, get the ball bearings. So he, he learned, it, if you want to neutralize him, shoot him in the face. Okay. So that's what happened. So man down. Yep. So we're stepping over him. Okay. And now we're going to go up to the second floor. So I have about six or seven, I don't know, guys in front of me, and they are going to split off now because they need to clear these. these there's, there's bedrooms and hallways on the second floor. So you want to clear the level before you go to another one. You don't want to overextend. So they clear, they're clearing it. Now I turn in, I'm the last guy in the line, but I turn into the number two man, because the number one man, his first threat is that stairwell right in front of him. So he just holds that and I come up behind him. Got and it. so the way that works is he's not gonna move. Anywhere you look, you, your gun needs to go. And when you're looking at a threat, I'm not looking away from it. I'm keeping it there. So a guy comes up behind me and I, my job is to look back. And I will tell him through a squeeze that we have enough. So he doesn't need to fuck around, I'll squeeze him, he'll know that means, this means I have a guy with me, this means we're going. So I got him like this, and we're out of guys. 
and I want two more because he's looking. At, he already he'd already taken a shot uh, before I got there. And um, your man? Yeah, my guy took a shot up the stairs. Got it. Yeah, and uh, I don't. You know, that's for him to tell the history. Of course. Um, um, complete badass. Uh, I want. He sees people moving, and I'm look. I want more guys. And he, what he he starts pimping me now. He doesn't know it's me. He knows it's one of his guys. He's like, we gotta go. Come on, we gotta go. Because what he's saying is, that's the suicide bombers. But we can beat them. But we have to go now. And this is this is my side of the story. But I'm pretty sure what he said was, hey man, these bitches is getting truculent. Truculent. I enjoy humor. This is my last joke in my life. I whip, before I squeeze him, I whisper in his ear. I don't think that word means what you think it means. <laughs> and then I squeeze him, and it's on. So we go up the stairs, and what there is at the top of the stairs, there's a curtain, not a door. It's like a, like a shower curtain, but it's green. So it's, uh, you can't see through it. You can sort of see under it. So he moves the curtain, and there's two people standing there that he thought were suicide bombers. So he jumped on them. To, to, like, how this guy doesn't have a Medal of Honor, I don't know. Because he jumped on the grenade. Like, the, the, he's absorbing the, the blast for me. Got it. So because I said how simple it is, if you go this way, I'm going that way. Because he went here, I went here, and there's Osama bin Laden. And he's standing up. Uh, he's got his hands on his wife Amal's shoulders. I'm closer to him than we are right now. And uh, the way my brain worked was um, he's taller than I thought. He's a lot skinnier than I thought he would be. That's, his beard's got some gray in it. That's his nose. That's his face. He's maneuvering. He's not surrendering. He's a threat. He's a suicide. And I shot him. So I shot him twice in the face over Amal's shoulder, and I shot him again as I'm moving Amal. So he's down here now, and I can hear him exhaling. He's, he's dead. I mean, I know what it's like, and it's, you know, I don't give a fuck who you are. That, I just killed a guy in front of his family. That's, you do, I moved his kid. I pushed them back, and but, so I'm moving them out of the way uh, because I know other SEALs are going to be coming in, and, I, and we're the good guys. I don't want them getting hurt. As I do, other Navy SEALs are now in the room, and I'm sort of standing there, I know I've been at war a lot, but now I'm having a moment. And uh, one of my guys comes, I'm just saying, my guy comes up to me, the, the same guy that uh, was in the van, the joke, and he goes, you okay? And I said, no, um, what do we do now? And he said, now we find the computers. We do this every night. You've done this hundreds of times. And I said, yeah, you're right. I'm back. And he goes, yeah, you just killed Osama bin Laden. Your life just changed. Get to fucking work. All right. So we got to work. We took a picture. The, if they ever released this picture, which I wish they would, um, those are my gloves holding his head together. Like I spilled water on his face and I held his head. We got some pictures. Then uh, um, they're starting to put him in a body bag. I'm going to go downstairs because I know there's, there's now three offices. So we go through there. Uh, I'm, uh, we call it sensitive site exploitation. Like that's where you find intelligence to get other people. Uh, so I'm looking for any, you start here, work your way up or whatever. And uh, I, I, I'm going to this bed. I pull out these huge duffel bags and I open them. And speaking of hunting, they look like freeze dried steaks in these Ziplocs. And I'm like, man, they're in it for the long haul. Then I realize, shit, this is opium. This is all opium. Uh, that's how they're funding it. There's just drugs everywhere. And uh, uh, then we do find computers. We're tearing apart computers, getting hard drives. Uh, anything that has writing or thumb drives, we're pulling. And then uh, it's like, all right, guys, fucking, we're leaving. And now outside, so we were loud. And now there's locals out there. There was a dude tweet, live tweeting out there. You could follow him on Twitter. Like, he's still up. Um, and he's out to tweet, and so they're like, they're, and we're like, come on, it's time, we gotta roll, it's time to go. Um, we had to blow up the helicopter, even though the pilot thought he could, the pilot thought he could fly it, but we're, we're just leaving it, we're blowing it up. So that means the other two that came in, one's gonna come get us, you guys are gonna get in this one, you're gonna refuel, they have extra fuel, they're gonna pick us up. Um, so we, uh, we put the body in the body bag, we're kind of rallying everyone up. I helped carry me and two other, three other guys carry the body bag out. We walk it out the door we came in, the, the double door, the sniper from the Cat Phillips Ridge right there, and I said, "Hey, brother, we got him." And he goes, "You're shitting me." I'm like, "No, let's get, let's 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 live. Let's get out of here." So they put him in this one. We went over here. Um, SEAL Team Six was on that too. So SEAL Team Six rescued SEAL Team Six. Uh, two more pilots, studs. Uh, they came in to get us. I saw the guy tweeting. Right, he's over there tweeting. His face is lit up by his phone. And I, was, I had a minute, I was thinking, um, in a war zone, I'm shooting him. Because he, we just took that house down, we just blew a bunch of stuff up, and, and he's, he's, he's going to blow something up. i got to kill him. I'm not shooting uh -huh. this guy. Because uh, I, I kind of smiled, I said, they have no idea we're here. Holy shit, I'm getting goosebumps now. Um, so the helo comes in, we hop in there, 
And then now we're leaving. And um, uh, my, the guy that, uh, that initiated this fire to rescue Richard Phillips, he, he took a little bit of shit. Like, I'm sure you've seen it in the music industry. If someone does really well, other guys are like, fuck him. Oh, like, get a little jealous. Please, that's the music business. Yeah, and that's us. And so, and I would tell him every day at work, I'm like, don't listen to that fucking shit. You are a hero. You're a badass. You're a and I'd say, here, take some of my Copenhagen. I would give him Copenhagen. Of course, and, that guy's yeah, a hero. And, well, he how was, could you yeah, not look at that guy like a hero? Some guys didn't, because they were so close to doing something, and they didn't get to do it. He did. But then I'm sitting on this helicopter next to him, the Bin Laden, we're leaving, and I'm, I'm trying, this just happened. And uh, I see this Copenhagen come in front of my eyes. He goes, hey, take one of mine. Now you know what it's like to be a fucking hero. I was like, dude, this is cool. The guy next to me who came in on the, um, to the rescue. He's a SEAL Team 6 guy that I know well. And he asked the question that everyone asked. He goes, who got him? And I said, uh, fuck, I, I did. And he's from Manhattan. He goes, on behalf of my family, thank you. And so it's sinking in. Now, but we're leaving. And we're supposed to die. But if we can live for 90 minutes, that, that's the amount of time it'll take to cross the border. If we can live for 90 minutes, we get 50 years.